Way better at this than I am. Oh, well. <laughs> if you can just say your name into the Sure. Uh, yes, uh, Simon Barry is my name. I'm the creator showrunner of Ghost Wars. What's the most depressing thing you've ever heard? The most depressing thing? <laughs> How you can't afford to do it this way. <laughs> That's the most depressing thing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do not have the money for this stuff. <laughs> Darn! Yeah. Dennis is no gentleman. <laughs> He's an alien in a human suit, is what he is. He didn't tell you that? Wait, can we have him back? Yes, you can. Dennis! Dennis! <laughs> you didn't tell him you're an alien in a human suit? No! Oh. I'm not telling anybody! I get to break the news! <laughs> Um, <laughs> but it seems like this is a much different approach to Yeah, well I grew up on movies like um, The Thing and The Shining and Sam Raimi movies and I, I, I remember and John Landis movies, you know, like American Horror Girl from London, where the, the, the movies were balanced in the humor and the horror. And in a way that you could have a scare and have a laugh very close together. And, the, and not that the movies didn't take themselves seriously, they did in a way, but they also allowed for entertainment in a way that acknowledged that this was a crazy world that we were telling the story in. And I think that for me, it's just a personal thing, that was my favorite flavor of genre horror, where the movies that understood that they were uh, having fun, but also prepared to scare the shit out of you at the same time and make you think and make and entertain at the same time. So for me, it's really just being a, child, a kid of those times. And then for me, that was a real imprint on what good horror was. And so it really has nothing more to do with just taste. Really. Uh, my taste of horror films and horror shows. And that's not to, to, to uh, disrespect any of the other versions of this, but with this kind of show and to sustain it and this big cast of characters, you really need different personalities. So we mine the horror uh, from our scenario, our setup, but the humor comes from character. It's not like it's, it's not like Ghostbusters, where it's trying to be a, a take on the horror genre in a funny, humorous way. All of our horror is real stakes, real violence, real death, but our characters deal with it in a way that a lot of other shows may not have their characters deal with it. And so that way we get to mine characterizations that are, you know, that have fun. And uh, for example, Kim Coates' character, it's hard for Kim, you, can, you can't, it's hard to imagine Kim Coates taking himself super seriously, <laughs> right? And so why would you do that in a show like this where there's ghosts and the paranormal and death? So we have fun with it. What's the balance between um, physical effects or uh, practical effects yeah. and CGI? Well, it's probably 50-50. Uh, yeah, we, we, are, we choose our moments pretty specifically, and sometimes there's a visual effect component, sometimes there's a physical effect, and sometimes it's a blend of both. So it's kind of a little bit of everything. Is there good setups? For, uh, we do, yeah. Things? We have a lot of physical like prosthetic effects, and we have a lot of physical... Uh, we, we don't rely on CGI for a lot of things. We, we have a great company, uh, Todd Masters, who's doing a lot of uh, creature builds for us and castings of bodies and things like that. So we, we're really only using the CGI right now for some of the ghost uh, apparitions and some of the cleanup work for the physical effects, like removing wires and uh, hiding things. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's it. No, we, we're lucky in that this, this, the psychological element of the show really transcends a lot of CG stuff because what you're afraid of what you're afraid of what you're afraid of are all different things and so each character in the show is being is being challenged based on their fear so someone may have a fear of maggots in which case it's maggots and someone else may have a fear of their dead child coming back in which case it's that you know you just don't know and so every every situation is unique and that's the other fun part we don't ever repeat ourselves in terms of the horror beats they are constantly different as different as people are get the whole the whole room when you showed that one scene yeah. was like, oh god. Yeah, because everyone, there's enough people who get that, that's the worst thing that happens. It's, that's great. Yeah. That was a great, yeah, great question. Yeah. Yeah. Are there elements that you want to 
want to incorporate that really haven't been incorporated before into this kind of a genre show, like ghosts. Like we've seen all kinds of different ghosts. Is there anything different? Yeah, we're doing we one see? big thing I think that people haven't seen before. I don't want to really talk about it because it's a bit of a spoiler. No, that's fine. But but yeah, we are. Yeah, by about sort of the second half of the season, we sort of flipped the we flipped the table on what it means to be a ghost and sort of you know how our science and the ghost world uh, overlap, you know, and sort of how the science and religion and paranormal are all one big idea, and we sort of wanted to explore that and show it. So we do. We are gonna have something I think that's never been done on a show, as far as I know. Yeah. We'll put you in the we'll put you in the ghost perspective. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not. I, I'm aware of it, but I can't really think about it because it just gets in the way of everything else. So I just focus on the show we have, the characters we have, the stories we have, the bubble that that show is in, and try and do the best job with that. Because if you start to compete, you just get. The show starts to steer away from what it's supposed to be, and at the end of the day, I can't really control that because sh there's shows coming out that I don't even know exist yet, and that could come out right around the time we do. So I can't. I just sort of go, well, whatever. I'll do the best version of my show, you know, as I can, and hope for the best. Because you're right, it's too big. Oh, Meatloaf is amazing. He is. Uh, he is. Uh, he's a. Uh, he's a fox. He sneaks up on you. He he comes off as one thing and then he'll flip flip on you and turn into something completely different. He's really smart. He's been through a lot. You know, he's an amazingly long career as an actor, not just as a musician. He's kind of been around the block. Uh, he's very smart. He's an amazing actor. Some of the most heartbreaking performances in the show are Meatloaf, which is not what you would expect, <laughs> but they are. And I guarantee you, it sort of like brings people to tears when they see the stuff he does. So it's, he's wonderful, and he's tons of fun, and he has so many stories. I just want to like sit down and write a book because his stories are unbelievable. Did you have actors in mind when you started the project? Not at the very beginning. No, we we as the show developed, we did start to kind of put together a wish list. So thank you guys. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you.